Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today I'm going to be bringing to you another must-have, in my opinion, a Seiko dive watch accessory. Going to be discussing and showing you some Crafter Blue straps, uh, custom made and cut for the Seiko SKX 007, 009, you know, the, you know the deal, 173, 175, SKX 835, SKX 011, all those 22 millimeter uh, dive watch, uh, lug dive watches. Uh, Crafter Blue uh, is kind of new to me. Um, I haven't hadn't heard much about them, and then I, you know, some customers have inquired about them, so I, I went out and grabbed the, and grabbed uh, the two that you see here. Um, I do plan on expanding across the lineup. They make uh, they make their rubber bracelets for um, a variety, uh, tons of Seiko divers, and then they also, I believe, are soon getting into the the leather business. So I want to take this opportunity to show you two of the straps, a blue and a black, and then I'm going to put it on uh, one of the watches. You could check out how it looks and see if you want to elevate uh, your watch. You know, it reminds me a little bit of strap code. Obviously, it reminds me a lot of strap code. Strap code's all the, you know, mostly I do all the metal bracelets, um, but this is just another option for people looking to up their game. I'm still wearing the Marathon Jumbo day date uh the review of this is uh actually i'm doing it right after this video so uh, it's coming soon and obviously still the squalimatic blue polished uh let's head on over and check out some crafter blue straps so let's start in the beginning first there's packaging i'm normally not a packaging guy i really couldn't care less but they seem to have gone through the trouble to package it nicely, so I think it's only fair to show it to you. Like I said, I've got two of them here. One is black and one is blue. Otherwise, they are the same strap uh, custom cut for the SKX divers. Uh, you can see the front of the bag has the brand name Crafter Blue. Uh, even though it says blue on it, that doesn't mean it's a blue strap. Crafter Blue is the name of the company. And then there is a little international guarantee card with a serial number on it. And then inside is also a baggie right here with some spring bars in it. So you can see it's, um, you know, packaging. <laughs> it really makes a nice impression before you even put the product in your hands. So here's the strap that you get in the bag. It's a normal two-piece strap, um, but that's kind of where normal ends. Uh, let's go over, I guess, some of the specifics before we put it on the watch and then put the watch on the wrist. So it's 135 by 70, which means this part is 135 millimeters and this part's about 70 millimeters. Now, where am I measuring? I'm measuring from the lug hole or from the spring bar hole right there to the end of the rubber. So to the tip where it juts out to meet the curve of the watch or the curve of the case, it is a little bit longer. But really, meaningful dimension is from the lug hole to the end of the strap. Ditto here from the lug hole, there it is, to the end of the rubber portion of the strap. So the strap is, it's beautiful. Obviously, it's 22 millimeters here. It tapers down to 20 at the buckle and the tail. Nice, solid metal keeper. It says professional on it. Folded metal. Check out the buckle. Look at the size of the tang. Very nice. The strap itself has two lines in it on the front for design and then on the back. It's kind of a wave pattern, but if you look, excuse me, it's a line pattern, but if you look, it's lifted. The edges of the strap touch your wrist. The inside does not, and that helps with ventilation. Crafter Blue Ultimate Dive Strap Branding. Flipping this guy over, you get the model number CB05, and I'll have a link below to purchase. Um, and then, obviously, nice massive holes to match the tang of the buckle. Uh, so this one's obviously black. It's made out of uh, nitro rubber. It's not. Uh, it's a synthetic rubber, uh, so it does not smell like vanilla. Um, I did the smell test. <laughs> it smells like rubber. Uh, it is. It's a smooth finish. It's not shiny, but it's nice and smooth. So the only thing I did not give you is the price. It is seventy dollars, uh, roughly seventy dollars. Um, oh, there is something I didn't give you: the thickness. The thickness of the strap uh, by the buckle on the end is four millimeters, so it is a, a nice thickness strap. It's not flimsy at all. It'll really hold up um, to abuse, and it's going to look great. So where does this leave you in the rubber strap market? Well, you've got the strap that comes on the 007, the 4FY8JZ, I think this is. Um, that we sell in 10 or 20 bucks. It's a very plasticky feeling. It's that wave pattern in it. 
You've got that R02F strap that you've seen me ooh and ah about, that 22 millimeter silicon strap. It's super soft, super supple. That's right around 40 bucks. And then matching it in suppleness is definitely this. Um, and then this is about $30 more, but it's got the curved end links, a curved end, end links, look at that, I mean bracelets, the curved ends to match the case. So what does that mean? Well, I have a head of a 007 sitting right here. Um, and you could see, I'm gonna try to fit it in there. I, I will install in a second, but check out the fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, I'll take a minute and I'll, I'll put this on here, I'll try it on, and then I will also just kind of put the blue next to the double nine so you can kind of see where, um, you know, how it looks, uh, but I'm not gonna do the full one on this. So I have taken, showing you how to take straps off of uh, these watches probably 10 times in my past videos, so I'm not gonna show you how to do it again. Um, you can go back into the archives and check that stuff out. Uh, so they come with, as I'm trying to pick it up with my glove, their own spring bars, which have um, shoulders on the end. I don't know, I don't think it's focusing on it, but let's see. There we go, you can see the spring bar has shoulders on it. it, makes it a lot easier to install and remove. So you take the spring bar, you pop it through the hole in the strap. And what you're gonna wanna do, at least this is you know, what I find is you just kind of push it through all the way so that one side is completely in and covered, kind of makes the installation a little bit easier since uh, it's a curved end, curved end link, but it's rubber so you can kind of force it a bit. Uh, you can, whoops, you can push it through and then what you're left with here is, I zoomed in on it here, so that's where the spring bar is. You'll take the tool, you'll push it in and then you'll just do a little wiggle and you'll, there you go. And I think the other one was hit home at the same time. And there it is. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we'll do it one more time. I'm going to pick up the strap. I'm going to pick up the spring bar or attempt to slide it in. I'm going to leave it. There we go, just like that. Hopefully I did it right for myself. I did slide the strap in leaving the extra spring bar hanging out just a little bit and pull down and slap it in. And there you go. And because it's rubber, it is certainly easier to do than, you know, the strap coat bracelets with, with the end links that um, are perfectly, you know, milled to match the case. So now let's, before we try it on, let's take a minute and appreciate what we've got here. I, I guess I'll zoom back in again so we can kind of see the integration. It's nice, obviously 22 fits between the lugs perfectly and up to the case. Check it out, looks nice. Let's pop it on the wrist and see how it looks on me. So there it is on my six and three quarter inch wrist. You guys know I regularly wear a 007, it's so not a problem there. Let's talk about the fit of the strap. The strap fits great, there's plenty of room to go. The holes are about on 3 8 centers. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've got at least an inch to go to the left uh, to go tighter and then, of course, loads of room to go larger. But what I am digging about it, and because it's, uh, like I said before, it's a 135 by 70. So your typical strap is normal sizes are 120 by 80. So that's 200 millimeters. This is just 205 millimeters long. So it's not much longer. So even though I have a smallish wrist or a smaller than average wrist, the, the keeper and the tail, no problem, holds it in. It's not flopping over like crazy. Uh, it, it really looks awesome. So then before we finish it up, um, I'll just show you, this is the Crafter Blue in Blue. Uh, kind of funny, that should be called that. <laughs> but that's the blue strap on a Pepsi on the 009. Now, the um, same exact fit, same exact everything the 009 does have a very, very dark blue dial. Um, so they, you know, I guess most people would probably go for the darker blue strap to accommodate the dark blue dial. The only thing I'm gonna say before finishing up is, I'm guessing that because it's rubber and it's pliable, I haven't tried it yet, I'm thinking it'll probably fit other watches. Um, besides Seiko's, will it fit Orient Divers, Orient Rays? I don't know. I haven't tried it. If you guys have tried it, you know, put it in the comments. Uh, I'd love to find out about it. And I'll almost certainly, you know, ask Crafter Blue themselves and, and, and do more videos on them. Uh, anyway, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you some new rubber strap options by Crafter Blue. 
Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments or want to comment on the fit of this strap onto other watches, I'd love to hear it. Put it down below. And thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.